Okay, so good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you for being here. So I'm, I feel quite honored to speak to this audience. Um, actually, I'd like to start that probably there is no day currently where we don't hear anything about news like autonomous driving, drones, robotics, big data, artificial intelligence, all of this. And what is in common with all of this? It's the number one data, because it's in all of the industries. And it's about having access to this data, to share data, and to track it. That's it. And what will happen in the next 14 years, if we listen to the Silicon Valley, this is unbelievable. There will be dramatical changes. And what I'd like to speak a little bit today is about what does that mean for us? Because one of the profound components in BIM is the common data environment. So I'm representing here ACONNEX. ACONNEX stands for Australian um, Connection Ex uh, Contraction Exchange. So we are focusing on, we, we are a, a software company. So compared to Mr. Schumann, we are not doing consulting. We are doing the base for all of that. Means that in this collaboration, we focus on design, construction and asset management. And it has been said before, it's all about the data, starting from the beginning through all of these phases. So what is unique in Aconex? We are serving the largest company in the world, like Fluor, Bechtel, Exxon, etc. Panama Canal, like really large projects. But after the takeover of Conject in this year, where I was one of the co-founders with, um, we are also doing projects in a size of one to five million euros. So we have a span which is like from the biggest to the smallest. Um, two things to mention here. We are cooperating very close with BIM managers to bring this into the real life. And we spent a lot of um, about 18 million euros so far in R&D to get the best software out in the market. So always when we speak about BIM, it's about the why. Number one, construction seems to be not so efficient so far. If we, if we believe what we get out there in all of these studies of McKinsey, etc., there's a lot of improvement potential. And actually, BIM is not just coming from the techie companies. No, it's a necessity because in manufacturing, it's in place for the last 20, 25 years. So what we want to do is we want to implement something in our industry, which is, well, it's time to do it. Number two, productivity is quite low. If we look at the charts and you're familiar with productivity in construction is going down, 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 down. Last week I met Patrick McLeamy from Building Smart. He was the founder in the US. He, it was his dream 20 years ago to work against this trend. And I can report to you that the trend is still going on, although there is a massive engagement right now going on. And Google is already waiting to reinvent construction. So the fear comes from some, from complete different places. And last but not least, um, the uh, oops, let's do that this way. Um, the industry is uh, least digitalized. There is only hunting and fishing, which is worse. Yeah, and the industry is spending just eight percent in IT spendings. So if we look at the cases or what is currently discussed. It's about digital collaboration and mobility, next generation BIM, data design construction, internet of things, and of course, a lot the digital twin, like build digital first and then do the real construction. So when preparing the presentation, we thought about you, because what should you may consider if you are interested in the topic and you want to enter into it, into it, either you are a developer, a contractor, an architect, or an engineer. So, first of all, um, I'm sorry that I have to move my head, but I can't read it here, so I have to be a little bit uncomfortable. Um, so, you have to accept the new language. Get familiar with all of these topics like EIR, employer information request, what is a BIM execution plan, etc. When you start with it, it seems to be very complicated. It's not. It's just complex. So you need to understand that first. 
be clear about what your destination is. It's not just a 3D model, maybe. And design your journey to this goal. Um, pick the right partners to help from a technological side, but also from a consulting side, like what has been said before. It's important that you have guidance and that you don't consider it as just a technical trick. Measure your success and last but not least, well, keep improving. Because so far, even if we look at the fast developed markets like Finland, Norway, Netherlands, Singapore, well, everybody was still experimenting, in particular in UK, probably the fastest growing market, but it's a good time now to start. We were ch chatting before the presentation saying probably in three years there will be maybe 10 times more people listening to this. So, what about the guidelines? Guidelines are coming pretty much from UK because they have started nine years ago, which was a real brave act to write that down. Yeah, I'm really, I can't believe it. And they put that in these public available standards where they regulate the what, which means it's the EIR, empl Employer Information Request, the how about the BIM execution plan, and all of these details, how data has to be transferred. And what I'd like to focus on is the common data environment, because that's the environment if we may do a project all together where we all meet. So that's the point to get that all together and agree on how the project should run. And um, we are in a similar, have a similar understanding like um, has Mr. Schumann has reported, um, with a slightly difference, of course. But the components, the five components are quite valid because as I said before, it's not just technology as an answer. And it's not just authoring because technology in, number, in the first place is the authoring tool, Number two is collaboration. So, so is the 3D geometrical model enough? Well, there is problem number one, because project information is much more than a geometrical model. Number two, people today think in the paradigm of files, boxes. That's why they use Dropbox, FTP, for an exchange of a file only but there is no clue of the content inside. And number three, there is nothing about open formats. So the usage of open formats is still low in the market. But when I speak about open formats, I'd like to share a famous matrix with you, probably shown in several conferences, but it's important to have that in mind. It's in number one, it's about the, the community. Yeah, is it, a, a clo is it closed BIM or is it open BIM, like do we speak one language which we all understand, or do we, everybody speaks in his own language. And number two, it's about formats. It's about formats, can these formats interact with each other. And what we did is we put that another naming, like connected to the wider project, or being disconnected, proprietary models, files and no data, or data process driven by open BIM. So, from our vision, it's clearly going into the area of connected BIM. But what is interesting to share with you, because we did a market strategy where we clearly investigated how do these markets function? Why, how do they work? And we may say this is like a child area because it's like an, a growing of a human over a teenager to an adult. Because what all markets have in common, if we go to Finland, Norway, and like I said, Netherlands, it's just a matter of maturity. So we can understand when there are people pretty much convinced that Autodesk is the only lonely answer to everything. I think that's not the case. There are also other products out there like Archicad, Alplan and other products which you should use. And we agree with the academical people by saying every person should use the best tool to do the job in the best way. So, um, when we speak about the lonely BIM, it's the case that 90% of people who are not in offices don't have access to the data. So that's a mess. We know that this is about 30 to 35% of reasons of having errors on site, that uh, people are not having a comprehensive information there. So the idea behind is to have one common data environment around that so that everybody has access to this particular data. 
But when we speak about having access to it, we have to acknowledge that architects using Revit are uh, experts on a very high level. And I don't know, when I, was, I got used to, to um, Revit, I was impressed how complicated it can be. But this is not the majority in construction people, because we have people who need easy tools. It has to be simple, an easy, fast viewer, and that has to be considered when we speak about sharing the information. Last but not least, the pearl out of that is the asset data. So we should always start with the end in mind. And when we start with the end in mind, it's not only about having the asset data, like the asset information model and at the end, it's also a, a, a topic which is very much related to I fulfill all regulations issues which I have to make sure if I'm an owner of an asset. Yeah? Fire protection and all of this security issues, etc. This can be managed through a digital uh, data. So, this means regarding the hierarchy of objects, we have documents, mails, inspections, commissioning, deliverables, workflows, all of that has to be linked to each other. So when we speak about the model, it's not about to create a model which has terabytes, it's having a smart model with linkages to every, every data which is available. Why either it's um, cost, this can be certification, it can be some smart manuals, it can be movies, it can be maintenance information, everything. Yeah, the race is open. And so this common data environment should be like the platform in the center from where you can deliver, display, resolve, control, report, and coordinate everything. This platform has open APIs so that in the future, companies can program their own applications on top of it. So it's a kind of an ecosystem where this will play a certain um, contribution in the project. And all of the other authoring tools are interfaced to it. Either it's Revit, Alplan, Autodesk, um, Archicad, Green Studio, or the quality products like Solibri, Navisworks, all of them can interface with it. It's also about the cost component, like in RIB i2, or with our own component, connected cost. And of course, certainly for the next 10 to 20 years, about any kind of documents, like I mentioned before. So, what is the process, or why should I do it? Actually, when I do it manually, it's, everything is very time consuming. So, the idea is to, um, to reduce this manual slowness, admin is heavy and it's error prone, to shrink that together. And, of course, we have thousands of processes in a construction project, it makes sense to improve that. So when we spoke to MACE, MACE is one of our major contractors in the UK, they could reduce from, a BIM, from BIM projects to conventional projects the amount of RFIs by factor six. That's a word in a large project in terms of man hours, time, etc. Yeah, and avoiding errors. So, three processes to share with you. Number one, design clash detection and model coordination. We assume it's Revit. Um, updates of the model will be submitted to the cloud, to the, to the um, common data environment. From there, it will be for, um, forwarded to um, the BIM coordinator in order to create the coordination models. From there, they do their, they submit clashes, clash reports or issue reports, etc. It goes back to the author, and from there, we have, of course, circles. Yeah, we call that agile development. Agile development comes into construction and design and construction. And what is done here is kind of a, a round trip. Number two, uh, ah, last but not least, important, I forgot that almost the transaction audit trail. So everything what happens there, there is a recording box which is important to your contracts. Number two, the RFI process. So the contractor is on site, he is missing information and he sees the model. So he raises an RFI, sends that in relation to the chiller back to, uh, to the designer in the office. From there, he assigns the document to the chiller unit and he can do the job in terms of commissioning. Last but not least, commissioning. Um, 
he has to assemble um, uh, uh, the, the hot water system, um, captures also data in the field, so it's not only having the model data, it's also capturing data in order to do project progress reporting. Um, he's doing all the updates and the links again to the model. So, one example is our huge client ICOM. They use it also in the UAE, in the United Arab Emirates, for all of their BIM projects in this regard. So, if you start a BIM journey, we would recommend, number two, select your BIM use cases. Choose a BIM consultant to do it. You may speak also to us, but a BIM consultant is pretty much the right guy. And design that around what brings benefit to you. Number two, regard, below the processes, it's also about the data for your asset. So if you are end-to-end -end oriented, your customer is end-to-end, -end, like governmental institutions or also some private companies, it's good to look to that and focus on what has to be built to the end. What you will get as a side product, you will get, you learn and you will get data for improvements. So you get the basis to do the S-curve development, to jump and to develop your own organization and for your future projects. And also you can um, get insights and learning in, in terms of continuous improvement. In particular, the last part is very important for company development. So I'd like to close with the following. Select a true common data environment and an experienced partner to get started. We as a company, we do that always together, hand in hand. We think, number one, if you choose it, it's all about simplicity. So a, a common data environment has to be easy. We have to address people who are not technicians, not architects familiar with Revit and to do it. The system has to be very powerful and in number two, we have to respect security requirements. Security requirements becomes more and more important. We know that cybercrime, etc., is a big issue. That's why we do um, um, checks now, with, the, with in, in particular with the US, for military projects, nuclear projects, in order to become certified. And last but not least, it's all about measure it for improvement. Yeah, start small. I always say it, there is nothing good, but get started. It's now the time to do it. We're not now, whenever. Thank you very much for your attention.